Hey everyone! Welcome to your first map reading activity for World Geography. Throughout this semester, we will learn all about how maps help us understand the people, places, and environments that make up our diverse and complex world. In this first activity, we will learn how scientists use maps to study characteristics of a population over a geographic area. We will also create a type of thematic map called a chloropleth map to show how life expectancy varies throughout the world and then take a look at some of the factors that may cause those variations. First off, let's go over the basic elements of a map. Any good map, no matter how simple, should have these components when possible. A title that explains to the reader what you're looking at, a scale bar that helps them understand the size of what they're looking at, a compass that allows the reader to orient themselves, and a legend that explains what your map is trying to say. If we look at these elements here, we can easily see that we're looking at a map of Africa, where a real inch on the map equals a thousand miles in real life. We can also look at the triangles to the north, and using the legend, we can quickly determine that there are fuel deposits clustered there. Map elements are the key to turning these images into an easily readable source of both quantitative and spatial information. Now let's take a step back and think about how a map actually works. At its core, a traditional map is attempting to take a three-dimensional space and represent it in two dimensions. Here's an example of projecting a human face using a number of different projecting techniques. No matter how we represent this, there will always be some level of distortion involved in the representation. This is because the total surface area of the Earth being mapped is larger than the two-dimensional area. So scale, area, or size will always show some level of error. Here's a Mercator projection, one of the most commonly used maps of the Earth and one that we're all familiar with. Notice the enormous size of Greenland in this projection, almost as large as the size of Africa. This Albers projection shows a more accurate size of the landforms, but it's still not perfect. Even the orthograph, the most accurate map to date, has distortion issues, mostly concentrated in the Pacific Ocean. Here you'll notice that Greenland is far smaller than Africa. So what can we learn from a map? We all use maps in our everyday lives to get around better. If you wanted to say, plan a trip from FAU to Disney World, you would probably jump on your phone and check out a map of the area. This type of map a transportation map is one that many of us are familiar with, but there are many other types of maps that can tell us many different things about an area. For example, maps can tell us about how many people live in an area, shown here with a population density map. Or here we can see how Floridians voted in the 2012 Senate elections in a political map. This map helps users assess the likelihood of a catastrophic storm given past hurricane patterns. Raw data can answer the questions of who, what, and when, but maps provide the spatial context to the data, the where. Scientists more commonly use these thematic maps, which are a type of map specifically designed to highlight a set of data such as population density, and show how it's distributed over an area. A chloropleth map is a special type of thematic map that uses differences in shading or coloring to display data variations in a single category. While we are working with our data, it's helpful to keep in mind some of the key causes to variations we see in life expectancy throughout the world. 
It should come as no surprise that the main contributing factors involve access to basic needs, such as healthcare, nutrition, and sanitation. Political stability is also a key driver, as areas with a history of armed conflict or civil unrest often have lower average life expectancies. Chloropleth maps are an easy way to visualize a single category of data over an area. The first step is to organize all of our data into a table, and then arrange it from highest to lowest. We then assign shading categories for data ranges. Here you can see that the US, Canada, and Northwest and Southern Europe fall into the highest category of data, and therefore are assigned the darkest shading. The majority of Africa falls into the lowest category, and thus gets the lightest coloring. For this exercise, use the blank world map available for download on Canvas. Use the World Life Expectancies data table to correctly shade in the regions of the world with their appropriate color categories. When you're finished, your map should look something like this with different shading indicating the variations in life expectancy throughout regions of the world. And if we think about what drives life expectancy, it makes sense that we see in this data more developed countries having a higher life expectancy, while the developing world has a lower life expectancy. And don't worry if your map doesn't look this detailed or clean. Here's an example of what one of your maps may look like. We don't have a way to add an accurate scale to this map, but we can still give it a proper title, north arrow, and a legend explaining to the reader how this map should be interpreted. You will now use the map you've created to answer the map reading activity quiz questions that go with this exercise. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.